Now, this is an amazing story of money uh, buying power and position in America. Now, it is a lot of money, as you'll see at the end of the story. Uh, this is about Rajiv Fernando, who knows nothing about international security, but wanted to be on the International Security Advisory Board that has top secret access. Now, he had been donating to the Clintons for quite some time, so he made an ask. And it turns out he got what he wanted. Now, let me break down the whole story for you. As Miami Herald explains, a major Democratic donor personally lobbied then Secretary of State Hillary Clinton's office for a seat on a sensitive government intelligence board, telling one of her closest aides that if appointed, he would make Clinton, quote, look good. Now, that has a little bit more context that I'll get to in a second, but it still doesn't sound very good. He's, uh, they explain, Rajiv Fernando acknowledged that he may not have the experience to sit on a board that would allow him the highest levels of top secret access. See, now, if I'm in charge, that's where I probably end the conversation. Except I might want to ask one more question. Hey, if you know nothing about security, international security, and you've never worked in it before, why do you want to be on the International Security Advisory Board? That's a question apparently the Clintons never asked. So Rajiv, though, did uh, characterize, characterize himself as, quote, one of Hillary's people. Okay, so that's good if we're looking at, to put people on a security board that keeps all of us safe. Let's make sure that we pack it with uh, people who are, got there through political favors and will back certain political candidates. That seems like a good idea. Uh, he goes on to explain uh, to them while making the case for himself. He's explaining this to her, Hillary Clinton's top aide, Huma Abedin, and, and to others in this, on the staff. He says, now everybody on that board is a top level defense expert, yet I feel like I can add a lot to the group. I have two professors from Northwestern and one from University of Chicago who are international security experts and are getting me up to speed on the academics behind the field. Now if this is such an important board and it's stacked with former Secretary of Defenses and some of the top experts in the world. Why would we want a guy who's got to hire a couple of professors to get him up to speed? It almost sounds like a Trumpian thing. Now, I don't know what's going on today, but believe me, you put me in power and then I'll figure it out later. No, perhaps we should have people on that board who've already figured it out. So, but he goes further. He says, in addition to my previous experiences <clears throat> listed in my resume, I've been meeting with professors, here we go again, from Northwestern University of Chicago and Yale. Wow, he added Yale. For the past six months, whew, I mean, you study something for six months and I am sure you are quite the expert. He says, I know I will be able to hold my own and be a valued contributor to this board. I promise I will make the secretary look good. Now, look, that has a little connotation to, again, being one of Hillary's people and don't worry, I got your back on this board for whatever you need. But it also has the connotation of, like, don't worry, I won't embarrass you. <laughs> now, if I'm hiring anyone for any position, it's a red flag if they say, don't worry, I won't embarrass you. <laughs> if it's for an incredibly important security position, that's a couple of red flags. But not in the case of Hillary Clinton, they're going to go forward. So they submit his name, they insist on it. Then it goes to uh, Deputy Assistant Secretary of State uh, Philip Rines. And now he writes this in an internal email. He doesn't know it's ever going to get out. But to another staffer, he writes, not the most compelling response I've ever seen since it's such a dense topic the board resolves around. Couldn't he have landed a spot on the president's physical fitness council? Damn, that stings. So internally, he's a joke. They think he's barely qualified for the fitness council. They're trying to put him on one of the most important boards there is. Now, at this point, you've got to be wondering why. But well, you already know the answer. It's the money, Lebowski. Wait till you get a load of how much money. Okay. But let's, before I tell you how much money you put in, let's figure out who he is. Who is this guy? Who's this guy, Rajiv Fernando? Well, Fernando uh, founded Chopper Trading. Oh, okay. Uh, I, t I hear people on Wall Street are terrific. Uh, a high frequency trading firm that was acquired by the Chicago firm DRW Trading Group in 2015. Now, if you thought uh, Wall Street guys in general were problematic, wait till you get a little load of the high frequency traders. Those guys do nothing. They just do, they figured out a program that allows them to trade a little ahead of you. You know what that allows them to do? Steal a little bit from you. They, they're not trying to figure out which stock's going to go up, which stock's going to go down. They're not trying to figure out who should I invest in so that that company can get better and create more jobs. No, no, no. 
They're trying to figure out who you're investing in and get in a fraction of a second earlier than you so that they, when you go to buy it, it'll cost you a little bit more and that'll go into their pocket. The fact that they haven't shut down high frequency trading is an unbelievable outrage. The entire thing is a scam. You know who else thinks that? Hillary Clinton. In an economic speech last year, Clinton criticized high frequency traders. Providence, Rhode Island sued Chopper Trading in particular and other financial companies charging they defrauded the city which managed funds for its employees. Now in public, she wags her finger. High frequency traders, cut it out. In private, she's like, oh, hey, where's Rajiv? Hey, Rajiv, come on, come here. I got a great position for you. Oh, that stuff I said about your high frequency trading. I didn't mean a word of it, man. Where's the money? Where's the money? Give me the money, I give you the post. So since he did that trading firm and then he sold it, he did make a lot of money. And he definitely dispersed some of it to the Clintons. Let's find out how much and where. Since 2003, Fernando has contributed more than $650,000 to federal Democratic candidates and organizations, according to the Center for Responsive Politics, which tracks campaign money. That includes Clinton's Senate and presidential campaigns, her leadership political action committee, and the group Ready for Hillary, which laid the groundwork for her second presidential run. Now already $650,000 is a lot of money, that might begin to influence you. Of course during the primaries, when people asked, hey the money going into Ready for Hillary in your presidential campaign, might that influence you? And she was like, outrageous. In fact, the rest of the media kept questioning Bernie Sanders like, are you suggesting that she would be influenced by that money? Is that the kind of charge you're making here today on national television? Of course, no, no, no. No, you just take a guy who doesn't know a goddamn thing about security and put him on the most important security board because the $650,000 didn't affect you. You thought he was the most qualified guy for that job? By the way, just so you know, before I tell you about the rest of the money, once they found out what, who he really was and how much he didn't belong on that board and it became public, they removed him within a couple of days. They were so embarrassed, They're like, oh, damn it, we got caught. Oh, sorry, Rajiv, you gotta go, man. <laughs> that backfired. But hey, look, we looked out for you. We tried to put you on the board, we did. Now you're thinking 650,000, is it really worth that risk, especially because they got caught? That was a boneheaded thing to do, it's such an obvious pay for play. Here, you give me money, I give you a super important top secret access. Well, uh, there's more money. Employees of Chopper Trading contributed $34,000 to Clinton's presidential campaign. So it's not just him, it's not just his company, it's also employees of his company. And then he served as a voluntary fundraiser or bundler for Clinton's first presidential campaign and later for Obama. He also gave $30,000 to a political advocacy group, Women Count, that has indirectly helped Clinton. That drives me a little crazy. You know, again, on the surface, I'm all about women. Women count. Uh, Rajiv, how do you want to funnel the money? Women, oh, you, you, you need to study women's issues? Go talk to a Northwestern professor for six months and come back. The day that women, you think Rajiv Fernando gave me said, oh man, I know women count. That's, no, he wants the board seat. Okay, but that's still a small amount of money. 30,000 here, 34,000 there, 650,000 there. Soon we'll be talking about real money. It'll be real soon. I got one more before we get to the big uh, uh, prize. In July 2015, Clinton attended a fundraiser at Fernando's home for a second presidential campaign. About 170 people each paid $2,700 to get into the event, according to the campaign. The fundraiser had multiple hosts, each of whom raised $27,000 or more. So this guy is funneling in money through every conceivable path and the Clintons love him for it. You know, he went on a trip to Africa with Bill Clinton. He's palling around, he's going on all these things. And because, hey, you got our back, we got your back. This is the legalized corruption that is endemic to our system now. The Clintons aren't the only people doing it. <laughs> They're at the top of it, so they do it on a grand scale. But this is what the whole country's turned into. Who can bribe me the most? What do I care about security or this or anything else? Substance, policy, who cares? Where's the money? But I haven't gotten to the big one, so here it is. He contributed between one million and five million dollars to the Clinton Foundation, according to records released by the foundation. So this is how it works. So I give it to groups associated with you who by then are totally in your pocket because they're getting donations from your friends 
and then they don't take votes of their uh, the people that are their members in that group, and uh, that's one group he happened to give to. But this is, again, I said, as I said, endemic to the system. This happens to a lot of progressive groups that endorse Hillary Clinton. We're not going to take a vote of our members. Where's the money coming from? Oh, it's coming from Hillary Clinton's friends. Yes, we endorse Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton is great, great for women, great for African Americans, great for whoever's giving me paychecks. That happens. Then they funnel the money straight to you. But there are some limits on how much money they could funnel to you. That's why he had to use some of his employees to funnel more money to her. And then, whoo, -hoo, granddaddy of them all, no limits on the Clinton Foundation. That's where the big money goes. And then the Clintons turn around, and yes, they do him a favor. So, establishment media, you asked all throughout the primaries, can you find any examples of Hillary Clinton doing favors for the people who gave her money? Yes, this is it. If you don't think that this is doing this guy a favor, well, you're part of the corruption and you know it. So, I know a lot of the reporters that are reporters who are on TV, they're clueless. You know, they, they got hired because they're clueless. And they're like, why, why, what? I don't see any money in politics. You see any money in politics? I don't see it. It's like flying right past them. You got hired because of how clueless you are, so you wouldn't talk about that. So, and I'm giving that to you as the benefit of the doubt that you're not a bad person. But now, if you see this story, are you going to tell me? No, no, they probably genuinely thought he was the most qualified. Is that why they changed their mind in two days when they got embarrassed when they, people found out who he was? You know he wasn't the most qualified. Do you think it might have something to do with the millions of dollars he gave them? If you think it doesn't have anything to do with that, <laughs> okay, you're either incredibly, incredibly stupid and naive, or you just say, well, well, I know it does, I know the corruption, but I don't want to report it. It's, a, it's, it's meddlesome. I just want business as usual. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make up an excuse. It's no big deal. It's a, we already heard that story before. Yeah, been there, done that, not a big deal, let's move on. And the very next time you will ask just as incredulously, can you cite any examples of Hillary Clinton ever being corrupted by the money she received? And you wonder why we don't trust you. You wonder why we don't trust the establishment media that doesn't uh, report on this extensively and go, yes, here is the example, here is an obvious example. They're all over Trump and they should be. Are they all over Hillary Clinton for this? I'm still waiting. And then you wonder why we don't quite trust the Democratic Party establishment, including Hillary Clinton. You want me to fall in line for this? Look, it's a different question altogether whether I actively vote for Donald Trump, which is inconceivable. But am I going to actively support Hillary Clinton and like do it like they do it, did in the old days, in which they still do in the corporate media, and be like, "Oh yes, Hillary Clinton, rah rah rah!" Don't look at any of those things. Don't worry about it. I can't see any evil. I can't hear any evil. No, I see it, I hear it, and I'm here to tell you about it. That's my job.